When it comes to going into the backcountry, it's all about weight savings and keeping foods that are good but will keep on the trail. So today I'm gonna to be sharing my backcountry burrito recipe. We're gonna dehydrate everything, pack it up, and it'll be ready to go. We're gonna start with the meat. This is some Axis deer. We're gonna cook it first, and then we're gonna start separating out the ingredients, and I'm gonna show you how to break it down, dehydrate it yourself. This is a great thing to even just have around the house for emergencies. It's food that'll never go bad. It's shelf stable, all whole ingredients, natural, fresh, things that I'm used to eating at home. Let's just jump in. We're gonna just, I'm gonna season this with some fajita seasoning and then we're gonna brown it, cook it. Everything has to be cooked before we put it in the dehydrator because we're planning on two things. It's gotta be, you know, taste good. We're gonna assemble it. And then the final step is rehydrate it out in the field wherever we're at. Today I'm using Axis steer. This is one went and got in Hawaii pretty recently. Uh, this is, I didn't add any fat to the grind on this because when you're dehydrating stuff, the fat is what goes rancid. So I try to generally use something super lean. You can use any meat. You could use ground beef, but just get lean ground beef. You could use elk burger, whatever. It doesn't really matter what kind of meat you use. Um, this is just what I have, but you want it super lean. So I didn't even add fat to this grind. And then just, I use a little bit of oil just to keep it from sticking to the cast iron here. And then I season it along the way. You want everything cooked. Like it's gotta be tasting really good before you put it in the dehydrator because when you rehydrate it, then you'll get all those flavors back. That's one thing I think some people do is they don't season it well enough ahead of time. So think of it like you're assembling all the parts now and then you're gonna put it in a bag and it'll kind of become the meal once you put it together and rehydrate it. You want this to be, you're gonna cut down on your time a little bit if it's kind of dried out. So I actually slightly overcook it um, because what I'm doing is I'm just like drawing out any blood, any moisture. So before I even put it in the dehydrator, it's like a little bit drier than I would normally do. Reconstituting it, rehydrating it, you're gonna be adding all that water and moisture back in. We're gonna put it in the dehydrator at the highest setting because it's meat. So it's gonna dry out, but we also don't want to grow any bacteria. So it's pretty important to kind of get your timing and everything right. We're just gonna do probably one, we're gonna do set it, yeah, 167. So that's the highest temp and then it'll probably be about four or five hours and we can just test it. Once it's completely dry, we'll know it's done. We'll just fill it up with these. And I'm doing all the ingredients separate because I like to do it at the optimal time for each one. You can make this whole thing and then put the ingredients all in at once, but what you'll find out for rehydration purposes, what'll happen if I put it in too high for a short amount of time, it'll go faster, but it's gonna kind of encase the outside of the bean. And when it dries that way, when you rehydrate it, it just stays harder longer. So what I wanna do is each ingredient, it's his optimal temp, because then when I add it all together, when we rehydrate it on the mountain, it's gonna use less water, less time, and it's just gonna be a lot better rehydrated. Having no fat in this is gonna actually make it cook a lot faster, a lot more even and it'll last a lot longer. So you don't have to worry about it going bad, which is really nice when you grind your own because you can get it with zero fat. There's hardly anything you can buy that has zero fat in it like this. So for the vegetables, like the beans and the rice, I'll put that on at about 120 to 130. You can do it lower temperature and it'll be about probably six hours, but I kind of start checking at around four hours every hour if I can, uh, just to make sure that nothing's getting overdone or everything's looking right fill these up, these trays. And it's nice to be able to separate it out and cook them at different temperatures. It just, not that it won't work the other way, but it tends to rehydrate a little bit easier and a little bit better. So I kind of like it experimenting with the end process and figuring out what settings you like. But for me, I'm doing these, the burritos separately. So we'll do the rice and beans at a lower temperature, right around 120 to 130. And then the meats about 150 to 160. On this, I'm doing a cup of rice, half a cup of each kind of bean, and then uh, half a cup of meat. So now I'm just gonna add the stuff that's a little more liquid. I'm gonna dehydrate the chilies and the salsa. And to do that, just parchment paper and run it out as a thin layer. I can do this at a little bit higher temp as well because it's pretty wet. So we're just gonna try to get this to dehydrate out and then we'll mix it in with our meal. Just takes a little bit longer, so this might this might go for six to 12 hours, maybe even longer. It just depends on the temperature that I got it at, but I'm gonna run it with the meat, so a little bit higher temp, and see if I can't get it to dehydrate nice. Just a good thin layer too. But I don't want it to crust over and then be hard to rehydrate, so I'm kind of pacing everything out, but this'll be good. Nice thin layer, and it should all 
go at the same time. Now the salsa, I'm doing the salsa on this tray. You could probably just do it on the parchment. This is gonna be really good. It's just gonna add the flavor to it. So kind of come out almost like a fruit roll up once it's done, but we'll go a little bit longer with it so it actually dries and then we'll mix it in with everything else. But nice, really thin layer, like paper thin layer. So we've got our fully dehydrated backcountry burrito. You can see all the ingredients separated out. We've got our pinto beans, black beans, rice, our salsa, some meat, some seasonings. So all that's now gonna go into our vacuum seal bag. If you've got them, I like to throw a food grade silica pack in there. That way if there is a little bit of moisture, it just keeps it more shelf stable. That way I can keep them you know, on the shelf or whatever in the pack and this will last me through the season or for quite a while. Then I'll put it in the chamber vac, seal it up tight, get all the air out, and I'll have a perfectly shelf stable, dehydrated meal, ready to hit the trail, ready to hit the back country. To cook them, all we'll have to do is rehydrate them. I generally use one to two cups of water. I boil it in my pot. I like to pour my dehydrated meal in my pot, then let it rehydrate in that hot water so I can keep a lid on it, keep it warm. So you got yourself a burrito bowl, or you can bring a tortilla, wrap it up, and have a burrito on the mountain. Pretty awesome. Been chasing elk around, and it's the middle of the day. Everything pretty much quieted down, so gonna make up some lunch. Got one of the backcountry burritos we made earlier for the trip. I'm just gonna heat up some water, about a cup and a half, and then I'm gonna get the water boiling, pour this in there, and then let it rehydrate. Maybe let it slowly simmer and then turn it off. And once it's rehydrated, I'll have an awesome burrito bowl right here on the mountain. It's looking good. I let it simmer for about five minutes or so. Let the water cook down and let it rehydrate. All the rice looks hydrated and beans as well. So got ourselves a backcountry burrito bowl right here. Eat this, fuel up, and head up the next mountain.